Hi, grade three readers, researchers, and writers. Today, we're going to combine our reading and writing lessons and look at how to figure out the meaning of scientific words and phrases in a nonfiction text that we're reading, as well as how you can work as writers to include clues that can help your audience understand the science words and expert phrases that are in the text that you're writing. So you definitely want to watch this whole video today because at the beginning, we're gonna do the reading part and then in the latter half, we'll do the end. So your first step for today is just to watch this video. Then you're going to make a copy of the glossary slide and start adding your own scientific words and expert words for whatever research topic you have been studying. Finally, you're going to work on including some clues within your text to elaborate your paragraphs and put in the different types of clues that can help your readers to understand all the expert scientific words that you are going to put in your own writing. So let's get started. There are four main types of clues that writers put into their writing to help a reader figure it out. And we're gonna look at all four but they are definitions or description, examples, synonyms, or antonyms. And we'll talk a little bit about what those are. So let's look at our first example, definitions and description. Blue whales do not have teeth. Instead, they have giant plates of baleen in their mouths. Hmm, you may not know what baleen is. I didn't before I used the clues to figure it out, Let's look at what clues this author gave us to find out what exactly baleen means. Baleen, it's in their mouths. Well, that's a clue. So already I know which part of the whale I'm thinking about. It says a blue whale has hundreds of baleen plates in their jaws. Hmm, are these like dinner plates or lunch plates? I don't think so. Let's keep reading to find out some more clues. The whale sucks in water as it swims then it pushes the water out of its mouth. The baleen strains out any animals in the water for the whale to eat. Well, now I have some clues. Whatever these baleen plates are, it's in the whale's mouth and helps act like a strainer so that when they're pushing the water out, it keeps the food in. That makes sense. I kind of understand how they work based on that description. But there's also one other thing this writer did that gives you a clue. They've put a picture. We've already been talking a little bit about how you can use text features like illustrations and photographs to help your readers understand. And these are a great opportunity with the scientific words to use a picture or illustration to help your readers really understand it. So not only do they have the clues in the text, the description and definitions, but they've also given a picture. That's a great expert writing strategy. I noticed there's another word on the page. It caught my eye because it was in bold as your scientific expert words should be. Crustaceans, hmm. The whale eats tiny crustaceans called krill. These crunchy creatures are about two inches long. Well, I guess crunchy creatures could be a clue, but if I'm still not sure what crustaceans are, the other place that I can look is in the glossary. Here we have a glossary as an example and you will all have a type of glossary in your expert writing as well. So keep thinking about what words you might wanna put in your glossary. Next, let's look at another strategy, examples. Sometimes authors put examples, and in this case, they put a picture example. Crack, the eggs hatch after 50 to 70 days. Tiny turtles called hatchlings crawl out of their eggshells. Well, looking at this picture, I can really tell what a hatchling is because I can actually see the turtle crawling out of its eggshells. But this author did something else special to call my attention to that expert word. They put the turtle term there as a call out. You might wanna try this strategy and use a call out as one of the text features to help your readers understand your expert words as well. Here it tells me the definition that a hatchling is a young animal that's just come out of its egg. Well, that's definitely what's happening in the picture with this turtle. 
So between the definition in the call out and the picture example, this writer has done a great job of helping us understand what a hatchling is. Of course, they also included it in their picture glossary. So before we saw a different example of a glossary, you don't have to have pictures, but one of the fun things about writing is that you get to choose and use your creativity to decide how you want it to look. So you may choose to have a picture glossary in yours as well, if you like that as a type of writing style for definitions. Let's look at the last two types, synonyms and antonyms. A synonym is something that's similar and an antonym is something that's opposite. So let's see what this first one might be. Prairie dogs live in large colonies or towns. Hmm. Well, if I don't know what the word colony means, this or gives me a hint that it's going to tell me a synonym. So prairie dogs live in colonies or towns. That means that a prairie dog colony is kind of like a town full of prairie dogs. And they've also given some other description, collections of prairie dog families, family groups. All of those you can see are clues that this author has put throughout the paragraph to help us understand what a prairie dog colony is. So you have the synonym of towns, or you can also use the description of families and family groups. That would be one way you can use synonyms to help your readers understand an unknown word. Finally, we have another example, antagonistic. Hmm. Among the multiple male groups, some may contain males that have friendly relationships, but the majority have males that are largely antagonistic relationships. Antagonistic, that's an awful big science word. I wonder what it means. Well, I notice it has the word relationships next to it. And up here it says friendly relationships. I wonder if antagonistic means friendly. Hmm. I noticed the word but is really important to this sentence. Some may contain friendly relationships, but the majority contain antagonistics. I think that word but is a clue telling us that antagonistic is the opposite of friendly. So you see an antonym or opposite word can work almost as well as a synonym in helping your readers to figure out what you mean. So when you're doing your writing today, Think about what kind of clues do you want to give your readers? Do you want to give them definitions right in the text? Do you want to use description to describe the science ideas? Examples to show your reader exactly what you mean by those science words? Or might you use synonyms, similar words, or antonyms? It's up to you to use your creativity and choose the style that seems right and feels good for the science words that you're going to put in your text. And remember, you're going to start a glossary with all those important science words, but you get to choose, do you want a regular glossary or do you want a picture glossary? It's totally up to you as writers. Just make sure that you start keeping track of all those important science words by making a copy of the expert word for your glossary slide, and then putting in the words for your own topics and the definitions so that you can keep track of all the great science vocabulary that you're learning and teaching your audience about. I hope you have a great reading and writing day today, friends. If you have any questions, reach out to me or your classroom teacher and we're happy to help. Bye for now.